Let's start with uh, let's start with uh, a really really interesting game. Probably my favorite game I got to watch this weekend was Nebraska Illinois. Number twenty four Illinois defeated number twenty two Nebraska thirty one to twenty four in overtime, improving to four and zero for the first time since two thousand eleven. Illinois quarterback Luke Altmyer threw four touchdown passes, including the game winner to Pat Bryant in overtime. Altmyer finishes with two hundred and fifteen passing yards and. Zero interceptions. Dylan Rayola, he had a good game as well, threw for 297 yards and three TDs, but was sacked three times in their overtime possession, sealing the loss. Illinois tied the game late with a six yard TD pass to 335 pound tackle. Brandon Henderson on fourth down. Zach, if a 335 pound tackle can do it, so can you. That's my motivational quip for the day. Uh, Nebraska missed a potential game-winning 39-yard field goal with three minutes left in regulation. Undisciplined play hurt Nebraska, which committed nine penalties and extended its losing streak to rank teams to 25 games. Ouch. Illinois continues its perfect red zone efficiency, now 16 for 16 on the season, and Nebraska's record 400th consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium was spoiled in the defeat. Zach, how did Illinois manage to pull this game out? Well, I think a couple things. One, I think Illinois was stronger in the lines than we expected. I mean, they re- they protected Altmaier well. The the line for Nebraska was the one that got worn down, uh, their defensive line. And you look at that last overtime, yes, Pat Bryant got the touchdown, but Caden Fagan ripped off a 21-yard run, which he had not been doing much throughout the game. But he was, you know, he had a big run at the – uh, in the overtime, Josh McCray had some significant carries. You know, they didn't necessarily go for big yardage, but I mean, he was pounding away at that defensive line. And, you know, the secondary again, I think played, I mean, the, the big interception, you know, was it an interception? Was it a touchdown? But like the secondary again came to play. And Luke Altmeyer, man, I've been saying since preseason, People were sleeping on him and he is a legit quarterback in this league. And I think he showed that while Rayola, I think has the higher ceiling, Altmaier is a legit dude right now in this conference. Yeah. Altmaier is legit. Uh, I did ding him a little bit for that fumble late in the fourth quarter that set Nebraska up for that field goal. I mean, Nebraska would have won that game. If they had hit that field goal, they probably would have won that game. Now, obviously, Illinois still had their chance. But then after that, Altmaier was given another chance to drive down the field, just get a field goal, and he still wasn't able to do that. So I did ding Altmaier a little bit in my quarterback grades to much of the Illinois fans' chagrin and not really liking that. That's okay. I'm a big boy. I can take the uh, I can take the criticism. But, um, yeah, I mean, Phillip, he's, he's saying it. He called it. Rayola would mm-hmm. make freshman mistakes, and Altmaier wouldn't make the mistakes. I'll tell you, I really thought, that Nebraska just, they had the better trenches in this one, and it was going to show. But, man, Illinois, they took that personal, Zach. They heard me yeah. say it. They were like, oh, yeah, JR said it. Let's go after him for it. And uh, they decided to go after the other team. Now, I do think the Nebraska defensive line was excellent a lot yeah. of the times. It was just the undisciplined penalties and errors that they made that was like, guys, are you kidding me? Like, you're, you're literally just giving up free opportunities here. Now, you can't ding Altmeyer for that. He capitalized on the mistakes, right? So we got to give mm-hmm. Altmeyer credit there. But man, it, Nebraska had chances to win this game. Yep. They just didn't do it. Yeah, well, and to your point, I, I think it's easy to maybe ding Illinois a bit and think, well, Nebraska lost it more than Illinois won. But I would I would counter that by saying Illinois went on the road and took advantage of the opportunities when they were there. And I don't, I don't think Nebraska was so much better from a roster standpoint And I think that bore out because I think Illinois stayed with them. They were resilient. They persevered. And when they, when it was crunch time, Nebraska faded, you know, and you can't, you can't ding Rayola too much, right? It was a third and three. I don't know how much I love that play call of going for the kill shot, knowing that you're going to try to go for a a field goal. I just don't like it when you have third and short and you go for a kill shot. I'm like, especially when you have the running game in Nebraska, you got, yeah. It wasn't like spectacular on Friday night, but still like that's a really good running game. You should be able to trust that. Right. Yeah. So just, you know, get at, 
worst four down territory. Yeah. I, I just hate settling for field goals to try to win games because they're kickers. And like, we've seen it with even some of the best kickers. Sometimes they shank and we saw that. So I just didn't, I just didn't like that. I understand why they did it, but when Nebraska had a chance to win, they didn't. When Illinois had a chance to win, they did. And that last overtime where they just sacked Rayola to what seemed like the, to, to the state of Indiana, um, or, I mean, just, I mean, it was out of the stadium at one point, uh, Illinois stepped up and did their job. Yeah. I, I, I can't say enough good things about Illinois after this game. They, they surprised me in so many ways. I knew that defensive line of Illinois was legit. And I figured if they were going to win in the trenches, that was going to be the spot that they would. Um, but overall, and I mean, who was it? Cox, that guy that got the, uh, interception in the end zone. Holy yeah. cow. I mean, yeah. That is the kind of play that I saw him. I saw him make that play, and I was like, "This, this, this is Illinois' game." I truly yeah. believe this is Illinois' yeah. game. Um, all right, John Jacobs is asking. He says, "Are you guys currently discussing one of the four takeaways, or are we merely going to review every game in succession?" We are going to review every game, but I also have a takeaway from certain games. And my takeaway from this one, I'm glad you brought it up, John. My takeaway from this one is that Illinois is for real. Illinois is not like Illinois is going to finish as a ranked team in my mind this season. They are not going to finish outside of rank. That's my prediction. Stick it to it. Illinois is for real. They're not going to have a tough schedule later on in the year. And you're going to see them with five or four or five losses or something like that. I think this Illinois team is for real. I think they're going to end this year ranked. And I think you're going to see Illinois upset some more teams uh, that other people are going to say, wow, I didn't see that one coming at the beginning of the year. You agree or disagree, Zach? Agree. Absolutely. I think their floor is eight and four. Yeah. Like, four, I, and yeah. the, the one, the one caveat to this is injuries, right? If they get injured, yeah. I don't know how bad the, de how good the depth is, but if Altmaier stays healthy, if the secondary stays healthy, I think they have one of the most underrated wide receiving cores in the country. Franklin and Bryant are dudes. And I, and I said this, I wrote an article after the Penn State, Kent State game, and I I, interview, I asked Drew Aller about this at the game, like, how are you going to prepare for the secondary? Because this is easily the best secondary that they have faced to this point. Mm -hmm. That game is, like James Franklin said it, they need whiteout energy for next week. Like, he is on alert, and there's good reason for it, because this team... Illinois is going to challenge Penn state. And I think Penn state's one of the top three teams in the conference at, at like a cut above the rest of the conference. And I still think Illinois is going to challenge him next week. Yeah. Now I'm not going to go put money on the game, but I saw the lines come out. The The line for Illinois Penn state right now is something like 17 and a half or something like that in Penn state's favor. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's awful. So, yeah. The, the, the betters really, they really stunk it up here. Uh, now they're, they're right more often than not, but man, if you're looking for a parlay or something like that, go put some, go, go put that one in there. Cause uh, Illinois is going to keep this game close than that. Illinois is not going to get blown out. So we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do more with the game when we do our previews and stuff, but we'll, uh, 